Weather and life both change quickly. Do you have a farm estate plan? You need to learn the best option to help your family avoid or minimize federal estate taxes and other costs. I'm Brad Swenson, President of Swenson Investments and Commodities. We work confidentially with farmers, ranchers, and advisors to help develop the best farm estate plan. During our Farm Basics time today, we wanted to discuss modes of action in terms of herbicides, and then also what are there for resistant weeds with each one of these different modes of action. I don't know, we're getting people confused here, especially if you're not a farmer, if you're not actively spraying pesticides, say, wait a minute, what are you talking about? When we're talking about modes of action, we're talking about different chemical families. So there are a number of different chemical families that farmers will use depending on which crop they're in, what type of weed they're going after, and when they're going to be spraying that Chemical product. families and how they kill weeds. So for example, one of my my favorite ones that came out years ago was a product called Command Herbicide and that was a pigment inhibitor. It literally would turn weeds white. I loved seeing that. It was just unique. So now we have other products that will also turn weeds white. For example, Balance Flex or Callisto or Laudis. And if you go out into a field and you see weeds that are white, you know that it was one of those herbicides that was used out there. Well, it can also be used as hair gel, which Brian has found out <laughs> over the years, and that turns things white as well. Oh, Darren. <laughs> Actually, there, there are so many different families, and, and you think about these chemical families and say, well, you know, wow, how, why do we have lots of different families? Because there are a number of different weeds out there. And what happens when farmers will repeatedly use the same product over and over and over again, eventually nature is going to outsmart us and develop a way around well, using yeah, that yes certain or no. pesticide. It, it just depends on how that pesticide works. So for example, with some of the ALS inhibitor products or the sulfonylurea products, they're very specific and they'll act on an enzyme that's found only in plants and it's one specific enzyme in the plant. Okay, so as soon as that gets modified, a little bit, well, bam, we've got resistance. Well, when you've got something like dicamba, the old dicamba that we use even today in products like Banvel, Clarity, Distinct, and Status, that just annihilates a whole bunch of different sites in the plant, so it's much more difficult for a weed to build resistance. But you talk about something like the ALS inhibitors, they focus on one specific enzyme that's only found in plants. That makes them very, very safe for humans to use because it's not True. going to hurt humans. True. And that's the way the research is going. It's going for a lot more specialized type herbicides to be used so that they're safer for the environment and safer for humans. Yeah, and all that's great. The problem is with a lot of these newer pesticides that are coming out, it's much easier for plants to develop resistance to those pesticides. So if you're an ag chemical researcher today, you've got pretty good job security <laughs> because <laughs> well, you're gonna be I coming so. out with something and that lifespan is only gonna be 10, 15, 20 years. Well, dominating the market right now or dominating the news about agriculture is Roundup resistant weeds because Roundup has been such a great product. And even if you're a non-farmer, you're probably using some Roundup around the house because it kills pretty much any weed that's green. That's been the marketing pitch for Roundup is if you've got a weed, just spray Roundup on it, it'll be dead. Now you have to be careful because it could kill your lawn or your flowers or something else that's right nearby. Now with glyphosate or Roundup, there are now 20 known species of weeds around the world that have been found to have some resistance to Roundup herbicide. And you say, wow, 20 weeds is a lot. Well, not really. If you look at the ALS inhibitors like we've been talking about, there are over 100 weeds that have known resistance to this particular family of chemistry. So while the Roundup resistance really catches the headlines, it's not as widespread or as many different types of weeds as what we think about with some of the other families. Well, you might say, how does this resistance even develop? One of the big causes is when farmers will go out and spray non-lethal doses. So for example, if it took a quart of Roundup to kill a particular weed and a farmer only sprayed a pint of Roundup on it, that plant gets the opportunity to get a little bit of the pesticide in and start to internally develop some of that tolerance out and then it goes to seed. And maybe that plant also survives, develops a little more tolerance. Well, eventually it just builds, builds, builds and you may end up with resistance. So when we talk about weed resistance and modes of action of different chemicals, what we want farmers to do is use multiple modes of action. That doesn't mean they're mixing five products together with every application they make, but if they used 
a product pre-emerge that's an ALS inhibitor, we'd say, you know, that's enough ALS inhibitor for this year. Let's use one of those pigment inhibitors. Or maybe we'll use some Roundup or something post-emerge, depending on the crop and if it's safe. And by mixing up those modes of action, the weeds have a really tough time becoming resistant to any of the products we're using. Well, again, there are many different modes of action or different chemical families out there and a lot of them have some weeds that have developed resistance to them. So it's key for all farmers out there to use different modes of action, rotating them in different years, even at different times of the year, to hopefully prevent future weed resistance, and most importantly, get the weeds under control that they have today to maximize yields and profits. Well, one of the most difficult weeds to control, we're gonna cover in today's Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? 